Come, you blessed of my Father, says the Lord. I was sick, and you visited me. Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brethren, you did for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today the church celebrates the feast of St. Peter Claver, comes to us from the 17th century, a Jesuit known especially for his ministry amongst slaves that were being herded from Africa through where he ministered, modern-day Cartagena, Colombia. He died roughly on this day, yesterday actually, in the year 1654. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you peel the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Peter Claver a slave of slaves and strengthened him with wonderful charity and patience as he came to their help, grant through his intercession that seeking the things of Jesus Christ, we may love our neighbor in deeds and in truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in regard to virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord, but I give my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. So this is what I think best because of the present distress, that it is a good thing for a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek separation. Are you free of a wife? Then do not look for a wife. If you marry, however, you do not sin, nor does an unmarried woman sin if she marries. But such people will experience affliction in their earthly life, and I would like to spare you that. I tell you, brothers, the time is running out. From now on, let those who have wives act as they have them, don't have them. Those as weeping, those as weeping as not weeping. Those rejoicing as not rejoicing. Those buying as not owning. Those using the world as not using it fully for the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear, forget your people and your father's house. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord, and you must worship him. Listen, Listen to, to me, me daughter. daughter. And bend, bend your, ear. your ears. All glorious is the king's daughter as she enters. Her raiment is threaded with spun gold. To embroidered apparel she is borne to the king. Behind her the virgins of her train are brought to you. Listen, Listen to, to me, me, daughter, and see and bend, bend your ear. ear. They are borne in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The place of your father's son shall have. You shall make them princes through all the land. Listen, Listen to, to me, me, daughter, see and bend your ear. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Raising his eyes toward his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. 
for their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. But woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for the ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sermon on the Plain in Luke's Gospel, <clears throat> of course like the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel, was really groundbreaking for us. We have maybe gotten so used to hearing these things that we don't realize how revolutionary they were. But in the case to say that you are blessed if you are poor, you are blessed if you are uh, grieving, you are blessed if you are hungry or thirsty, even then we see it and go, wait a minute, would that really be so much fun? Now, of course, it's different from Luke's to Matthew's in the geography. Was it on a hill? Was it on a plain? And, of course, in Luke, we get not just the blesseds, the happies, but we also get the woes, the other side of it, a declaration of, you know, sort of condemnation for those who are rich, for those who are not mourning, for those who, you know, aren't hungry. It's very different for us. Um, I can remember being in England and, and walking the streets and at crosswalks in London, they, they, they gratefully put down the... The, on, the, on the pavement, look left. In other words, this is where the traffic is coming from. They're the only real place in the world where, you know, the traffic drives on the left side of the road, not on the right side of the road as, as we are used to. And so they must have had so many accidents of people just out of habit, right? Now, for us, we look at it and go, unthinkable. Why would you do that, right? But, of course, for the natives, for those who live there, it's just what they're used to, what they live with. And so in the same way, this sort of message from the Lord uh, calls us out of comfort, right? The key to it, of course, is what's in the very last, among the last lines, <clears throat> that woe to you uh, who, woe to you who um, have, uh, who are rich, you have received your consolation. And it doesn't seem like much in the English. But the have is essentially the word, in other words, you've been paid back. It's, in other words, somebody borrowed money from you and they paid back the loan that you gave. So it's the question then of looking always to heaven, that uh, we, we understand that these lives on this earth are transitory, and happiness in this world is wonderful. We hope for it, we shoot for it, peace, prosperity, you know, a sense of, of joy and gladness. There are those who don't experience it, there are those who struggle in their lives. But ultimately we say that this life is just transitory, and one day we will enter the eternity of heaven, and when faced with eternity, the 60, 70, 80, 90 years that we face here on earth are not necessarily as, as big. Uh, so we live our life now doing things for the good, for what it will gain for us in heaven, not for the happiness or the pat on the back that it will give to us here in this world. If we're only doing it for the joy uh, uh, of the moment or, or the, um, <clears throat> the acclamation of others, then we're not looking at it the right way. We're not doing it the right way. St. Paul in the letter to the Corinthians, again, we're taking one little bit out of context. And he's looking at it in the way of, you know, he's talking about a bigger question perhaps going on in Corinth at the time. And that's the, the bigger quest, the bigger picture is he's saying to them, you know, don't live, you know, the second coming is happening. Christ will come again. And so he's saying kind of don't be so worried about the here and now. Look to the future. Look to what's going to happen. Paul would change his mind later on, whereas first he would talk now about not getting, whatever you're doing, stay where you are, Christ is coming. So if you're not married, stay not married. If you are married, stay faithful in your marriage, right? He would say, don't, don't change anything because the, the end is coming soon. But years later, maybe decades later, by the time he writes to the Ephesians, it's a whole other thing. It's always looking that it's not going to happen in perhaps our lifetimes that the Lord comes again. So we do what we can to live our lives well here on earth. Um, today we reflect on St. Peter Claver. We reflect on a life given, as we heard in the opening prayer, what he considered himself a slave to the slaves. By the time he's ministering in Colombia, uh, Slave trade has been going on for about a hundred years there. Slaves gathered in Africa and other islands and places brought to Cartagena. It was the staging place. And Peter was born in Spain in the 
south of Spain, Catalonia, and, and uh, goes to university, discerns his call to this relatively new society of Jesus. And there he meets in with others, his spiritual director, and feels the call to the missions. And he ends up in <clears throat> what was called New Granada at the time, but uh, we call today Colombia. Uh, there he saw the state of the slaves as they came in, herded, crammed into these ships. And while others would perhaps wait until the slaves came out to begin to talk to them, he would gather what he did when the bell was sounded, no matter what time, when a ship was coming into port. Um, he would gather what he could get from begging from others, medicines, lemons, bring some water. Uh, his cloak, they say, you know, his cloak that kept him warm, if he found slaves shivering, he would put it on them. Um, of course, slaves came and had all kinds of sometimes sicknesses and whatnot, and it was said that it was stained with the blood and fluids, the sores of slaves, but still miraculously smelled like roses. Um, and it was a story that it would, you know, anybody who had the cloak on them would, would, would be healed of whatever sicknesses they had. It was said in his life that he ministered to something like 300,000 slaves over the course of his years there baptized many of them. Um, for some, it was the last voice, the last face they would see in their lives. For others, it was uh, just the beginning of coming over, scared out of your mind, and seeing this face in front of you who treated you with dignity and treated you like a, a human being, which you hadn't been for the last you know, few weeks of your life taken from your home. Today, especially on this day, U.S. bishops have asked us to reflect on racism, to reflect on, uh, call this a day of prayer uh, for uh, helping to work to make our neighborhoods better. You know, that wonderful song, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Uh, we're asked to reflect on the racial strife in our world, in our country today, and they've asked us to turn in prayer to St. Peter Claver and also to St. Catherine Drexel was, of course, a, a, you know, from Philadelphia, uh, an heiress who gave it all up to uh, enter a religious community, the school of the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, um, who gave much of her inheritance to found schools for Native Americans and for African Americans at a time when people weren't endowing any universities necessarily for that situation. Um, we do all these things because, as we heard, you know, we want to spend eternity in heaven. We ask God to help us in those moments of our life, to uh, give us clear minds, to maybe give us strength to suffer a little bit, to do what we can to assist our neighbor in need, but above all with the prayers of the saints to uh, be his eyes and ears and hands and heart in this world. St. Peter Claver, pray for us. The Lord desires joy for all his people and sees us in our need. Let us bring our petitions to him. For our church leaders, may God continue to conform them to himself, empowering them with a wisdom that is not their own. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected and appointed leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in their efforts to protect the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sorrowful, hungry, or cast out, may God provide hope and healing and relieve them of their burdens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may the sacrament we receive help us grow in holiness and goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may the Lord bring them, hip, bring them to his everlasting joy this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Robert Van Volkenberg, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear the prayers we bring before you today, and please answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of blessed St. Peter Claver, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Peter Claver you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. So with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This is how we all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another, says the Lord. For those joining us by live stream, we offer this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we, who are renewed by these sacred mysteries, may follow the example of blessed St. Peter Claver, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people through Christ our Lord. Peter Claver's name comes up a bit in our American Catholic history, beginning as sort of a bit of a dark moment uh, with the foundation of the Knights of Columbus in the 1800s, there was a time when communities didn't want black Catholic men to be part of their fraternal organization. And what it led to was a break off, a creation of a group called the Knights of St. Peter Claver. They chose him as their patron, this patron of charity, of concern, a fraternal organization. Of course, today, you know, these are just bits of our past, but the Knights of St. Peter Claver remain. Um, found especially in places like Louisiana, um, inner cities, uh, Baltimore, uh, Washington, D.C., places um, where these organizations still exist and look to Peter Claver as their patron. So we remember them in a special way today in the good works in the fraternal organization that they are today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.